Across Britain, there are more people coming out as bisexual every year than those coming out as gay or lesbian. They say it's just a phase or it'll pass and they don't realise how hurtful that can be. People say that it means that I'm a slut. Constantly having to come out to friends and family. Government statistics suggest about 2% of us identify as lesbian, gay or bisexual but 40% of those people say they're bi. Being told to pick a side between gay and straight. Oh my God, you're so greedy. Everyone thinks I actually fancy them. And yet, despite bisexuality being included in the LGBT acronym, many don't feel welcome in the LGBT community. Having to prove I'm gay enough for queer spaces. Being told I'm undateable to women because I'll leave them for a man. In the LGBTQ plus community, there's not really a place for you. They feel their sexuality isn't taken seriously and say they also face prejudice from heterosexual people too. Being fetishised by ex-boyfriends. Why did you have to tell us? People often accuse me of saying I'm bisexual to turn my boyfriend on. The CEO of Britain's leading LGBT charity has now said that biphobia from within the community is deeply offensive and says we all must do more to improve the visibility of bisexuality across society. In 2016, Katie Salmon was a contestant on ITV2's Love Island. The show tries to match men and women as couples, but for Katie, one of her matches wasn't male. She became half of the show's first and only same-sex pairing when she chose fellow contestant Sophie Graydon to couple up with. There's nothing to be ashamed of, there's nothing to feel bad about. You're completely normal and, you know, there's so many people out there like you and just as long as you love you, that's all that matters. The pair were both open about their bisexuality, coming out to a TV audience of about 1.5 million. Sophie sadly died in June this year. But Katie has now spoken for the first time about the biphobia she faced from both the gay and straight community when she returned from the show. I was always in the gay clubs. Um, so, yeah, I, it was always in the back of my head, always thinking that, oh, you know, I feel this feeling. Oh, maybe it's just because I'm in these clubs. Maybe it's just because I'm around these people. And so I kind of, like, put a cover over it and kind of just thought, oh, it's because of who I'm surrounding myself with. It's not really who I am. When I come off the show, when I was reading some tweets and my brother was telling me a few things that, like, my own gay community have been saying in Liverpool, just throwing, like, some shades out there and saying, like, no, she's not. Um, who knew that about her? Because I'd obviously been in it for so many years and never really done it so publicly. I felt like they all completely doubted me and was, like, criticising me and kind of just like treating it like it was nothing, like, oh, she's just doing it for another reason. She's not, that's not really who she is. Like doing it for publicity or 100%, something? percent, yeah. I get called greedy so much um, and just not talk seriously. You would think that those people would be the ones that would support you the most because 100%. they've been through it themselves. That's what hurt me the most because I thought you've probably been in this position that I've been in. Your emotions have probably felt like the way I felt, I can't even describe it, when it was mm. in that present moment. I was so scared because I didn't know what the outside world were thinking. My family were thinking, my friends were thinking. So I was quite really upset, to be honest, that they'd not supported me from my own community who'd also felt them feelings and probably them nervous feelings of coming out. And what about in the straight community once you'd come back from Love Island and you were in the wider world again? It's more from men than it is women. Um, I'm quite fet like fetishised and they see it as quite a sexual thing. You know, they never really take me seriously when I'm having conversations with people. If I ever drop that in, think it's entertainment for them. They'll be very sexualised by it and they'll be like, oh, so you like women as well, like threesomes and say like rude things like that. And I think that's what really bothers me because if I was ever going to do it to please someone, it would be to please myself. It would never be as an entertainment value for anyone other than myself. Yeah. What I find with women is, if they've got the little temptation in the mind, they will always think that I'm completely up for it. So don't use me to figure yourself out. And I'm attracted to certain people. I'm not attracted to every single woman that goes by me, nor I am, am I with a man. Do you know what I mean? And people get that confused. Um, but I think, yeah, like, why not? Why can't I be who I want to be? Lewis Oakley first had a boyfriend at 19 years old after moving to London and spent a lot of time in the gay community. 
if I was gay, I'd be gay. It's not that I am on a journey to figuring out who I am. I know who I am. When that relationship ended and he began dating a woman, he said he was shamed by some of his friends. I remember we'd just broken up, and obviously I'd been out as bisexual for years. Like, they did know that I was bisexual. Um, I was out at a club and I met a girl and we were kissing and then some of my gay friends took pictures of us kissing and put it on a group chat and it was saying things like, oh, disgusting, a gay guy being seduced in Soho, um, all that kind of stuff, which I obviously read the next day and was just like, what? Like, that, first of all, you know I'm bisexual. Second, can you imagine if I had taken a picture of you kissing a guy and had written this? Yeah. It's not very equal. You would think there would be more standards. empathy more understanding, but there's not. Um, and it really worries me because a lot of the, a lot of the discrimination I've received for being bisexual has come from the gay community. It's really strange. I've heard a lot of the time, you know, like, oh, I said I was bisexual too in the beginning, you'll figure it out. And for me, that's really irritating because it's like, actually, I've dated a guy for two and a half years. If I was gay, I would be gay. I've done all the stuff, you know, I've held hands with a guy, said I loved you, had sex with men. You're just having a problem with it. I remember my girlfriend said she was at a party once and someone came over and was like, are you the one dating the gay guy? People have said, you need to break up with him, you'll eventually find him in bed with a man. Um, how will you ever satisfy all his needs? Um, oh, you know, he'll be looking at guys and stuff like that. Just a lot of, a lot of digs that just invalidate your relationship. I'm mixed race, and I've never had someone really be like, oh, you're mixed race, that means you're more likely to cheat. They would never say that to me, but they will say that about being bisexual, and to me, I just see it as the same thing. It's like, you are making assumptions about me because of something I can't change about myself. I was able to hide it in myself because I found women attractive. Mm. So you could use that as, as leverage to, to kind of make people look, look in the other direction, basically, and make yeah. yourself look in the other direction. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, bisexuals, I think we are the best hiders because we, we, we can blend in, in that sense. But it's also... We can pretend to be straight. Well, yeah, it's also, I mean... Or pretend to be gay. Yeah, exactly. I mean, th it's one of the things I was thinking about when I was with my ex-boyfriend and we would hold hands walking down the street, people would think, oh, there's two gay guys. Now I'm walking down the street holding hands with my girlfriend and people think, oh, it's a straight couple. They don't get that I'm bisexual. So we are just by our nature invisible anyway, even when we're not trying to be. And that's hard because I think, you know, um, a gay man in the street that's maybe a bit worried about coming out can see two gay men walk past hand in hand and it gives them strength. We're never going to get that for bisexuals because it's, it's invisible. Yeah. In June this year, the LGBT charity Stonewall found a third of bi people aren't open about their sexual orientation to anyone in their family, compared to just 8% of lesbians and gay men. Their figures show it's more difficult for men to come out as bi, as almost half of bi men and a quarter of bi women aren't open to anyone in their family. And 3 in 10 bi men and almost 1 in 10 bi women say they can't be honest about their sexuality with their friends. Stonewall also found that 27% of bi women and 18% of bi men have experienced direct biphobia from within the LGBT community. The charity Stonewall was set up to try and eliminate homophobia, biphobia and transphobia from across society, but their own figures show how bad biphobia still is within the LGBT community. Their CEO, Ruth Hunt, says much more needs to be done to ensure bi people feel included in all walks of life. We have a very real problem, and it's something we don't talk about because you don't wash your linen in public, do you know what I mean? Like, we're all one big happy family. But in fact, no, I, we know from all our evidence and data that, that bi people really do worry about the hostility they'll experience from our own communities, our own people. Where do you think that comes from? I think, I think that there is an anxiety from lesbian and gay people that, that bi people don't really belong and they're not proper. And, and it's a deeply offensive, stereotypical, stigmatising narrative. But it's something that's really popular and keeps being perpetuated. And I think that's particularly severe for men who presume that they're just on the way to gay. 
and for women it's just presume they're trying it out. It's a real reluctance to acknowledge that bi people have an identity and it's who they are and it's a reductionist approach to sexuality where you go well who you are is defined by what you do so what are you doing today that's your identity and it's, it's a very old-fashioned antiquated view. Someone might go with their opposite sex partner to pride and then be told that they're not welcome in that space that is deeply unpleasant. What are you doing as an organisation to try and change that? So our bi staff meet regularly and really recognise where bi erasure is going on across all our different outputs. Even in the workplace we find that uh, after quite a lot of work that has happened with organisations around LGBT issues, lesbian and gay people are much more satisfied as groups of staff compared to bi staff. So there's something real about not being able to be out. We know that being able to be yourself is absolutely key in every area of life and that means being honest about who you are but bi people are still reluctant. You never see bi characters faithfully and respectfully um, portrayed on television at all. You know, when, when you see someone bi on television it is always a matter of indecision, crisis and conflict. When Coronation Street starts having a bi character who is, is, uh, is, is beautifully at ease with their sexual orientation, the impact will be huge. Bi people don't only struggle coming out or gaining acceptance, they're also more likely to be the victims of abuse. In fact, the United Nations found that across the world, 61% of bi women and 37% of bi men experience rape, physical violence or stalking by an intimate partner. That's higher than both hetero and homosexual people. And rates of depression, anxiety, self-harm and suicide are also higher in bisexuals. Lois Shearing first recognised her sexuality at 11 and when she came out at 14 she looked for support online and via relationships but instead found only biphobia. The first kind of video I clicked on about uh, bisexuality was a video entitled What Lesbians Think of Bi Women and being young and naive I was quite enthusiastic and thought it'd be quite validating and positive but actually it was very negative and <clears throat> was a lot of negative stereotypes about not wanting to date bi women because they're cheaters or they're just faking it for men. Um, and that knocked my confidence quite a bit because I was still coming out at the time. And so I think I avoided looking for any kind of other information about bisexuality online for quite a while after that. So it definitely set me back a little bit in my journey of becoming confident in myself and finding out, you know, that there's a, and there's a thriving bi culture out there if you can find it. It's just, there's a lot of barriers to finding it. One of the first women I sort of got involved with when I was quite young um, told me once that uh, lesbians won't want to be with me because I'm too straight and straight men won't want to be with me because I'm too gay. And that just kind of stuck in my mind for a long time and I think I, I believed that for quite a while. As a result of her experiences as a teenager, she set up the Bi Survivors Network offering a space for bi people to talk about what they've been through. When you're a survivor and you're at a very vulnerable time in your life, the idea of facing any of that kind of biphobia, even if it's just a microaggression of being told you don't really exist, is something that you maybe can't handle. For the people who join us, it's just a place where they know they're never going to have to defend themselves to people who should be able to understand them. Several of the people have experienced uh, intimate partner sexual violence, Based, based around their, their bisexuality. One person in the group has had that happen to them, where it was a male survivor who was threatened by a female partner that she would out him if he reported what had happened. So obviously it adds an extra layer of, if you can't access a mainstream, or so heterosexual survivor service because you're worried about being outed, and then you can't access a LGBT survivor service because you worried about these comments and the biphobia, where do you go from there? Um, so that's why survivors and bi people are more likely to be survivors, just kind of feel like they've got nowhere left to turn. While each bisexual person's experience of biphobia is different, many share the common experiences of unacceptance, exclusion and erasure. They want their sexuality recognised as legitimate and to no longer be judged or ignored.